Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Unfortunately, because we're all staying home, it's a little bit hard to play board games right now. So we decided we're gonna make this video with a bunch of different resources for you to play games, whether it's over things like Zoom or Skype or maybe some other different digital resources. We're gonna start off though with just simply digital games because that's the quickest and easiest way to play some games. If you're a board game player, then you're probably familiar with a lot of these options. There are digital adaptations of games that are on platforms such as Steam or many video game consoles, a lot of them even on your phone, iPhone or Android. And those have always been around and they are still great resources. A lot of them have solo play. And if you have friends that can get the, their hands on those games too, you can link up and play online with them. Uh, then there are some more generic types of platforms that you can play a wider variety of games on. In particular, there's two that are really popular. Those are Tabletopia and Tabletop Simulator. Both of those will simulate the act of playing a physical board game on a table in a virtual space. Uh, now, there are differences between the two. They have different games. Sometimes they have games that are made directly by the publishers of the games themselves. So you get the official resource on that. Sometimes there are third party or fan made versions of games. The great thing about both of those programs is that a lot of those options are free, or at least some aspect of the games are free to play right now. Uh, we have used both Tabletopia and Tabletop Simulator. I know some people have their preferences. I think they both have their uses. I don't. Do you have a preference between the two, Will? Not particularly that I could think of. I think uh, whatever I need, uh, they both fit that job pretty well. Yeah, um, I, I think, and I think they've also they've been updated over the years and improved mm -hmm. a lot. So if you have a VR headset, I'll say that uh, Tabletop Simulator uh, works pretty well in VR. But uh, Tabletopia also works in browser. So you don't even need to download uh, anything. You don't even have to have Steam. You could send a link to one of your friends or family mm -hmm. members to play a game with them. That's pretty great. Uh, we're also gonna be putting a link in the description. A board Game Geek, Geek made a great list of games that you can play online for free. Uh, a lot of them just in your browser. So uh, just self-contained games, not even, again, not part of any video game system or anything like that. So those are some great ways to digitally play games in which the, uh, the layouts and like the interactions you have with the cards and pieces are at least in some way built in to the platform. Yeah, I mean, we've done a couple of reviews on some of these digital versions of games, and for the most part, they can be pretty fun. It's definitely something where you need to talk to some other people to get some purchases because you'll get a lot more than playing a bot over and over again for most games. Yeah. So it's probably something to look into, especially some of the simulators, because that's a little bit easier to sync up with friends than some of the other ones. But maybe you just want to actually play some actual games because you already own it. But so we're going to talk about some of those games that are probably maybe work a little bit better either through Zoom or Skype or maybe the easiest way is through RPGs because a lot of those are using the theater of the mind. And there's already programs out there such as Roll20, which will actually give you a board for your GM to use, maybe make little drawings if you've watched us stream some of these RPGs. Uh, or maybe some more detailed maps on there, whether you pay or some things are free. Uh, there's also actually a new interesting program called Deal Me Cards. This is if you're going to play more over through Zoom and Skype, and you can actually scan cards to give to people, including hidden cards. Yeah, yeah, that's at dealme.cards is the URL. And depending on the game, some games might have a little too many cards for it to work with, but with certain games, I think it could be really helpful in letting you uh, use those use those cards and easily give everyone the information they would normally have if you were in person with them. Yes, and we're not the first, though. You may have seen us uh, streaming some games. There have been plenty of people doing it. And you can do that as well with your friends through Zoom and Skype. And we thought we'd talk a little bit about what games we think work well for that. And I'm actually going to start off, off with a little bit of a cheat. <laughs> and that's if a game that multiple people own. Uh, the obvious example here is Magic the Gathering. Uh, because each player would usually have their own deck, you just need to stream your half of the board. Yeah. Now, I know for our friend group, uh, outside of Magic, I think most of us usually, like, I'm the one who owns that copy of the game, or you're the one who owns that one. So this is probably one that's a bit more niche. Mm -hmm. It could work better if you, I mean, you probably want to play with friends, but you could just find people online through uh, different social media sites, and maybe they're more likely to have a copy of that game. Right, that's absolutely true. I'm thinking of just usually with people I know. Yeah. Uh, 
that just tends to be where my mind goes first. <laughs> yeah, fair but enough. But there are some games that still work pretty well, you know, uh, on the table of with only one person having the game itself. Yeah, um, I think a few big elements to look for in your collection if you want to figure out what would work for this. First of all, you're going to want to get your camera situation set up. Oh, yeah, you, that probably is the most important part. If you don't have a camera, that sort of negates the rest. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's really important to have ho- uh, hopefully an overhead camera that can see the table, even if it's at an angle. Uh, I have been doing it here at my home with just a lamp. I've been hanging my webcam on a lamp. So you don't need to go super high tech for this. Just anything you can do for that. Or a lot of games don't require an overhead. Some party games you might be able to play just with your face. We've been doing that with just one, for instance. Uh, But a few other things that you want to look for. Co-op games are great because you're all working together and usually... Everything on the board uh, is meant to be seen by all players, uh, which really leads into the next thing, which is games that have no hidden information. The thing that makes this really tricky is if you have a hand of cards you need to look at, that's hard to simulate. Maybe you could try using that deal me cards thing, (laughs) but if you don't, if you're not sure about it, that's something that you really want to look for. Right. And, you know, it's even harder enough, like, let's say we're playing something like Battlestar. You know, when you're cycling through deck cards, you have a hidden roll. It's going to be just very hard to keep track of. Uh, another big thing that makes it hard is if players have their own personal play area. So uh, we were talking about suburbia as an example, but there are a ton of examples. Anything where players have to really focus on their own personal pieces as opposed to a central board, that makes it harder because your camera is probably not going to be able to pick all that up and everyone's going to be looking at something different. It's, it also is a little bit less enjoyable. You might be able to get away with one. Like one I've been thinking about, and I'm still on the fence about, it's probably more towards the no, but is uh, Kingdoms of Valeria. Because it is a engine building game, but really it's just each turn a a pair of dice are going to be rolled, and you just see whose cards activate. Even though one person could be the one who has all the cards, it sort of stinks if you can't see your own you know, nice little engine. You feel nice when you see all those cards lined up. So that might be one that you might want to avoid. Yeah, yeah. Um, Some other games that would work well in general, the roll and write genre is a good one to have because it's usually now this kind of goes against what we just said, because it's something where everyone has to look at their own thing. However, most of these games offer their extra sheets online or sometimes through an app. Right. So it's easy for every player to have their own copy of it. And usually they're all like using one common pool of information. So as long as one person has the deck of cards or the dice or whatever it is, you can make that work for a group. Uh, In fact, they're one of the most common games we've seen streamed from other people. And usually you can actually join in with them. So if you don't have a lot of friends to play around with or don't can't sync up the times, you might be able to play something like Welcome to with the creators. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Tiny Towns, uh, not a roll and write, but could also work. Similar sort of better if infinite ha- number of players. <laughs> yeah, and better too, I think, if you have uh, your own copy. But uh, in general, party games, uh, a lot of oh, them yeah. I find are really good because usually they have fewer pieces. Uh, anything that's like about a word game or trivia Code names is a really big one people have been playing. A lot of times those lend themselves well to this method of play. Um, uh, and, and we've been playing things like Concept. Like you said, we're planning on probably doing uh, Welcome To. We have other things lined up. Uh, and if you'll continue to watch our channel, you get an idea as to how some of those work. But these are just yeah. general tips that are like good things to look for in your collection, I think. Yeah, I mean, you know your games better than anyone else. And you can look through them and decide whether you could get away with it. I'm going to probably try this Deal Me Cards thing now, but I'm still trying to maybe make Gloomhaven work. Uh, in particular, because that's a lot like role-playing games and would fit very nicely with uh, syncing up everyone since they're more likely to be home. Yeah, yeah. I've heard people report on playing The King's Dilemma remotely. with. Some, I have thought about that. Yeah, which is a legacy game that involves a lot of negotiation and, and voting. Escape room games can sometimes be good. Anything with like puzzles that, again, that are cooperative, you're solving together. Those can be good. That's a perfect example of no hidden information. I've seen a bunch of people putting together um, like murder mystery type of games. Um, You know, I think that sort of falls into the realm of RPGs too. any of those, any social kind of game that focuses on interactions with people more than pieces. Diplomacy. (laughs) If this is, if you want, people have been playing that online for years. 
Uh, one final recommend I'll, I'll give to that's it is a video game is the Jackbox Party Pack games, which are pr- pretty board game adjacent. And uh, I think that if you can if, get someone to stream those for everyone and they can all tune in using Discord or something, we might be streaming that. We might be doing soon. that, too. So that's a great resource for a larger group. If you're creative enough and like we said, as long as there's not too much hidden information you can probably adapt a lot of games. You, you just have to figure out how to make them work. Yeah, hidden, I think the big thing to watch out for is hidden information and personal pieces. Yeah. You know, like whether you, like we, we mentioned Suburbia and uh, Card Kingdoms. You know, both of them are competitive. But even something like Arkham Horror, you know, where you get your own item cards, your own, like if it's second edition, your own little money and different values and stuff like that. That can be a little hard because you sort of want to know what your own board has. Yeah. So that's definitely something like how much tracking does each person need to do on their own? Correct. It's a, it's a, it's problems we need to figure out that we never thought we would have to think about before. <laughs> but that's why for those games that do have those, the other things we mentioned before, like tabletopia, tabletop simulator often lend themselves to that a lot better. Uh, now there are a few other resources, uh, for games that you can try out maybe within your own home. If you have access to a printer, a lot of companies have been putting things up, uh, as free print and plays, uh, Asmo day put up a bunch that are kind of like demos of different games. Again, we'll have links for all these in the description. They have, uh, like a little demo of Dixit was in there. I think some unlock content, uh, as well as some other games, some especially good for families, I think, and kids to play. Uh, and uh, a really big one, Wizards of the Coast, put out a bunch of free Dungeons & Dragons content. And again, going back to Roll20, RPGs are an awesome thing to have at this time. Oh, they're great to do for a lot of creativity, and no one has to feel bad that they don't have the pieces because they usually can just have it in their mind. <laughs> yeah, pencil and paper is usually all you need. So that's an easy one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, there's a lot more. Uh, Portal Games has been putting out, uh, has put some cool content for their games. Uh, Plaid Hat, a lot of companies are doing like solo content or again, print and play modules mm-hmm. or add ons. A lot of companies are doing their best to try to make sure you have a chance to pl- still play their games, even though it's a little bit hard to access them and the players to play them. Yeah, which brings us to the last thing that we want to <laughs> shout out, which is that a lot of these companies are now putting on sales mm-hmm. uh, to make this easier on people. Again, this is uh, maybe a little dated because uh, these sales, who knows how long exactly they're going to last and new ones could crop up here and there. Uh, but right now, uh, I know Gale Force 9 is running a storewide sale, the creators of Firefly and Star Trek Ascendancy, a mm-hmm. lot of other games. Paizo is doing a bunch of sales. They do the other very big RPG of Pathfinder and also Starfinder if you want more of a sci-fi instead of a fantasy theme going on. So definitely check them out. And Cryptozoic is doing some cool stuff. They'll probably, depending on when you're watching this, you should keep an eye out because they're going to have their convention, their digital convention very soon, which means they might have some new products on sale as well. Yeah, so as usual, my advice is to, if there's a company that you like, Follow them on Twitter. Uh, check out, sign up for their newsletter. Uh, I've been seeing some sales come in here and then from different companies. The, those will float your way, especially right now. Or, or if it's not a sale, sometimes they just have a, a special, like we said, a special print and play, some kind of a cool module, some way you can play a game at home that will help you out right now. Uh, maybe join a, like board game Discord channels, things like that can be a great resource if you uh, don't have people around you that are willing or free to play right now board games online with you. I per- you know, the digital games are definitely, I think, the easiest instantaneous way to do this tabletopia and tabletop simulator are probably Mm -hmm. your best bets. Uh, personally, I, there's something I still love, you know, why we play board games. We love the physical pieces. And I also kind of like the challenge sometimes of trying to come up with ways to play these games remotely. So I find that a little more fun. I am very excited to, fully solve the puzzle that is Gloomhaven (laughs) remote play. (laughs) Let us know in the comments, what games have you been making work? Because, you know, we're still experimenting. We're still trying things out. I know that other people have put out lists. People have been playing a lot of games and it'd be fascinating to hear from you. Which games have have you made work uh, remotely? If you have only one copy or maybe multiple copies or in Tabletop Simulator and Tabletopia, do you have preferences between those two programs? Are there games you think work better than others? Mm -hmm. Let us know. 
And if you're curious what we're trying to do, we'll be streaming solo games Monday and Wednesday. That doesn't work as much. But we will be streaming us actually all playing together on Fridays usually, as well as RPG Saturday. So you can join in and possibly, depending on the game, join us and play with us. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Please do that. Thanks, guys. And stay inside and stay safe for now. I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. This was Roll for Crit. If you want to help out, you can check out our Patreon or a simple click to like and subscribe can go a long way. We really appreciate everything that you can do for us. We love you.